Costa Mesa police detectives are on a manhunt for Army veteran Sam Hare. Investigators believe he killed his lover, Julie Kibuishi, and now he's on the run. Police were looking for an armed man who may be suffering from PTSD, who might have murdered this young woman in his apartment. That's high priority. That's all points bulletin. That, that gets that kind of attention. Cops are trying to track his every move. They turn their focus on his ATM transactions and hit gold. Hare's just ordered a pizza on his card. The pizza delivery is headed to a home address in Long Beach, California. Now stationed outside Hare's house, SWAT teams prepare to take down a violent and mentally deranged combat veteran. But when they knock on the door, a shocker. This 16-year-old boy's name was Wesley Freilich. Hardly an armed and dangerous fugitive. It's a pimple-faced teenager who's scared to death. Wesley Freilich is immediately ruled out as a suspect in the murder of Julie Kibuishi. In fact, Wesley doesn't even know Sam Hare, but he does know this man, Daniel Wozniak. He told us that Dan Wozniak had given him the credit card, and he had just been there a couple hours earlier, and uh, he had picked up $400. But who is Daniel Wozniak, and what's his connection to Sam Hare? Danny Wozniak was a community theater actor. He lived here in Costa Mesa, right across from Orange Coast College. He was engaged. He had a hard time holding the job. He's a young guy. He's in various plays. Apparently, in community theater, leading men are in demand, people who have time to, to go through a production and are willing to take the lead in the play. Um, so that's what he spent most of his time doing. As seen here in outtakes for an upcoming play. Hi, my name is Dan Wozniak. I'll be playing the role of John Davis in Orange County. <laughs> <laughs> okay, take it again. He really loved doing these plays. He didn't want to work. He kept getting fired from job after job. And he wanted to uh, maintain this lifestyle where he's got you know, pretty young fiance, they're about to get married. Daniel's fiance is his acting partner, Rachel Buffett. Their wedding is less than 48 hours away. By all accounts, he's living the high life. In fact, he was at his bachelor party in Huntington Beach. But his world was about to come tumbling down. Homicide detectives break up the party with an arrest warrant. One team went in the front entrance. Uh, myself and uh, Sergeant Keith Davis went in the rear so no one could flee the restaurant. We went into kind of a private party room, opened the curtain, and Dan Wozniak and several of his friends were in this room. Lieutenant Ed Everett finally lays eyes on the elusive Daniel Wozniak. I immediately looked at Dan Wozniak. He made eye contact with me, uh, and he immediately turned white. You could see the blood kind of draining from his face. I knew at that point uh, there was more to him than he either knew where Sam was, was at, uh, he was hiding Sam, helped Sam flee, or he had more involvement in this than he was letting on. Cops haul Wozniak in, and back at the Costa Mesa Police Headquarters, Daniel denies any involvement in Julie's murder. He claims his only crime was a credit card scam that he and Sam had concocted. Basically, he came up with some scheme about uh, using the credit card, and he was going to give the credit card to Wesley, and they were gonna pull all this money out of Sam's account, and then Sam would report that he was a victim of, of theft. But before Daniel could cash in, he claims Sam made a startling confession. I got a knock on my door. I wanna say it was about 8, 8.30 in the morning. Okay. Opened the door, it was Sam. He's like, there's a dead body in my apartment. He's like, okay, basically, as soon as you let me, I started doing some drugs and drinking heavily, because I was very depressed about my family. I said, what did you do? He's like, I got a gun. He asked for sex. Um, he was pretty up. He said no, and then he just shot her twice in the head. Daniel claims after the confession, he dropped Sam off at a local shopping center and never saw him again. But police believe Daniel is covering for Sam. So they turn up the heat during their interrogation and demand a DNA sample. What we're going to do is, um, this is a, a swap. We get a swap for okay. eliminate you. Uh, should we take a second here? Oh, eliminate me? Yeah, eliminate you from any uh, any issues. So basically, just open your mouth for me. Perfect. That's it. Oh, Very OK. Painful. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you know, where it is, it's just an elimination process, you know. Once the DNA is collected, Daniel's memory starts to sharpen. 
At that point, he became uh, visibly nervous. And that's when he started to add more details to the story and change, make some changes. Now, I was in Sam's apartment Friday afternoon. Okay. And I know I did use the bathroom. You did use the bathroom? I used the bathroom, um, and I went, I'm not sure if I went out on the patio or not. Most of the time I do, but that day I don't know if I did or not. Okay. Detectives are starting to get the impression that Daniel is worried his DNA will show up in Sam's apartment. But why? I think you know a little more about this thing than you're, you're divulging to us. No, I don't. I think there's a little, a whole lot there, more. There may be, but please question me. And uh, any gaps that I, I want to fill, absolutely. As far as your participation in this thing? As far as my participation? Yeah. Yes, I helped him get away. Yes, I knew that he had killed someone, and yes, I knew that I stop, helped him. Stop, stop right there. Detectives remind him they have his DNA. We got your DNA? Yes. OK. Where's that DNA going to show up? Um, uh, in Sam's car. What about on Julie? No, it wouldn't be on Julie. You sure about that? Yes, I'm positive about that. Did you see Julie dead in the apartment? No, I did not. No, I did not. No. At that point, he basically is now saying, yeah, I was in the apartment. Uh, I may have touched these things and, and this and that. Um, but again, it's not indicating uh, any, any real contact with Julie. Detectives still suspect Daniel is holding something back. They decide it's time for a little good cop, bad cop. First up, bad cop. Something. Uh, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. You're arrested for murder, okay? Sensory murder. That's what you're being arrested for. You don't want to talk to us, to us anymore? That's, that's okay, it. Okay, yeah, we're well, done. Hold on. We're well, done. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. We're done. Unless you want to talk to us, we're done. I will talk to you about anything if it gets me to my wedding on Friday. No. That's what I will promise. Enter good cop, Lieutenant Ed Everett. Yeah, you got the answers. You can help us. I don't know what else you want me to say. I don't know. Tell us. I truth. don't know. Tell us the truth. You're not that good of an actor. Dan Wozniak was an arrogant guy, and I think he thought he was going to act his way out of this. But Daniel seems to be cracking under the pressure from Costa Mesa's finest. Okay, fine. You know what? He didn't come down. He came down and said, "Help me." I went upstairs, and yes, I saw the body. Is that what you want to hear? No. We want to hear the truth. That is the truth. When Dan Wozniak was changing the story, he indicated he was in Sam's apartment. At this point, that's kind of our aha moment that he's involved in this more than what he's leading on to be. Then detectives press hard. They know Daniel is about to break. So they bluff. Detectives tell Daniel his DNA was found on Julie's body, even though those results won't be available for weeks. How'd your DNA get on her? Because I was right over the body. What's that? Because I was right over the body. Okay. So how'd your DNA get on her? That I don't know. DNA doesn't just fall off. I don't know. Okay. I didn't touch her. I didn't do anything. District Attorney Matt Murphy is watching in the next room. He's not impressed. You know what he is? He's very bad at improv. You know, great at memorizing his lines, very bad at improv. And these detectives are all about putting somebody to it, putting them on their heels, and seeing if the story adds up. Then, detectives move in for the kill. What did you see? I saw two gunshots in her head. And I saw her pants, like, ripped and cut. And I saw, like, F you written on the back of the shirt. Where were the two bullet wounds? I don't know. Sam said he shot her twice. OK. And but you I just, saw, I you saw, just, I didn't see. You just told us you saw two bullet wounds. You were standing over. No, 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 no. Okay. Whoa, 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 stop. Okay. okay. How did your DNA get on? I was standing over the body. I saw two bullet wounds to her head. Exactly what you said, man. You can't even keep your lies straight. So when Wozniak uh, basically told us he was in the apartment and saw two bullet wounds to Julie's head, I, I knew at that point he was lying. There's no second take for this actor. Daniel can't keep his line straight, and his script has just been flipped by his own admission. 
Anybody that's actually seen a woman who's been shot in the back of the head, you can't see how many bullet holes. She had long, beautiful black hair. You can't see how many bullet holes. And that immediately, that is the moment that the investigation turned because those, those detectives who were there, who saw her, they know that you couldn't see two bullet holes. Next, a key piece of evidence that leaves cops with only two possible scenarios. At that point, he either was the shooter or he was present when Julie was shot. But they have no idea what they're about to find.